Hello guys and welcome back to another Elden Ring Builder video. Today we're going over my strength build and I was debating whether or not to post this one because it's actually quite basic in the sense that it was built for my tastes so it's not utilising any OP gimmicks like the Royal Knights Resolve jumping attack one shots. It doesn't utilise any faith buffs, it's strong but it's also designed to fit around the pure strength power fantasy and make use of various weapons whilst ultimately being very tanky with insane amounts of poise so you can just swing away with your chosen weapon and feel like a warrior slash barbarian which is a class place style you'd find in any classic RPG. So usually we'd start by talking about the weapons first but we're going to do things backwards this time because the armor is actually fundamental to the build. This is primarily an endgame build simply due to the weight of the armor in order to achieve this level of poise as well as the investment in the stamina attribute but I will go over ways that you can work towards this from a low level if you're a fresh character looking to work your way towards it. So the first thing to get out of the way is unlike any other build our equipment weight doesn't matter as long as we're not overloaded. Heavy load and fat rolling is fine because we're going to have a way to mitigate that. So the armor we're using is of course going to be the Bulgo armor because it not only offers incredible amounts of physical damage negation but it's going to give us the highest amount of poise possible. Though I do swap out the helmet for the altered banished night helm simply for the fashion which by the way if you don't have access to the Bulgo armor or the veterans armor then the banished knight armor is going to be your best choice. So just as fashion choices go to mix up the armor, I'm using the altered Banished Night Helm. From here, when it comes to talismans, for the most part, the setup is going to look like this, with the Great Jars Arsenal probably being the most important item. The reason that we have this is so that we don't become overloaded whilst wearing this armor and using colossal weapons, as well as carrying secondary weapons if we want to buff ourselves. Next, we have the Bull Goats Talisman, which is going to further increase our poise. The Dragon Crest Great Shield Talisman, which is going to massively boost our already high physical damage negation. And then the Shard of Alexander, which is of course optional and dependent on your Ash of War and how often you use skills as a part of your damage rotation. So all in all, the combination of this armor with these talismans, we are already going to be insanely tanky and able to poise through most attacks within reason. But now for the secret source, it's actually one of your flask tiers. And that is the Winged Crystal tier, which temporarily reduces equipment load. Now when I first saw this, I didn't think it was that great and I mentioned this in my dex video because I didn't like the idea of fat rolling outside of having our flask. What I didn't know at the time though is not only how long this lasts but it has one very important effect that isn't obvious without actually testing it for yourself. So not only does it last for three minutes but you'll also end up with a light load meaning lightweight rolling no matter how heavy you are. So dual wielding colossals whilst having theoretically 133 poise if you go full bull goats armor which is pretty damn insane. The only issue with this is because it kind of breaks low level PvP at the moment and a lot of people are complaining about it, it could get nerfed. And if it does get nerfed, that will impact the build because it is kind of relying on this flask if you don't want a fat roll. But we will cross that bridge when we come to it if it does get nerfed. I'll make sure to update this build. But essentially, that's the basic concept behind the defensive and utility aspects of this build. Next, we'll go over my favorite weapon combinations and favorite Ashes of War. So we'll be taking a look at the Colossal Greatsword, aka Guts Greatsword, the Colossal Giant Crusher Hammer, the Knight Rider Glaive Halberd, the Great Stars Hammer, and the Zweihander. I use all of these weapons in different situations with different Ashes of War. So let's start with the Guts Greatsword. Apart from this weapon obviously appealing to the strength power fantasy of this build, along with its reach it has a really nice moveset, lots of wide arching horizontal swings but it also shares the same crouch poke seen on much lighter greatswords such as the Claymore which combined with the Ash of War Giant Hunt basically makes this a human destroyer so any human enemy can get sent flying up into the air with this even Melenia will get bullied by this skill I think the only human like enemy that I haven't managed to send flying with this is the crucible knights with their insane poise but I do stagger them with it which is good enough and in regards to the crouch poke and the giants hunt they're also one of the best roll catches in pvp though for pvp I'd probably use something a little bit lighter like maybe these y or even a regular greatsword like a claymore but if you wanted to use this weapon in pvp it's more than viable simply due to the moveset and being able to use this Ash of War. So next the Giant Crusher Hammer, another obvious choice in terms of the power fantasy. The biggest limitation of this weapon I would say is its range but what I do like about it is if you pair it with the Ash of War Lion's Claw which is essentially the same animation as the weapon's charged heavy attack except Lion's Claw comes out significantly faster and does significantly more damage on top of the fact it has near infinite poise. I don't think there's a single enemy attack in the game so far that I haven't been able to poise right through with Lion's Claw and that's irrelevant to our naturally high poise I did actually test this skill with no armor and it poised through every attack I tested it against so it's just a super bonk and poised through anything playstyle though with this playstyle there is also another recommendation for weapon because whilst not aesthetically matching from an RP perspective there is a slightly better choice in terms of 
the practicality which would be the golem's heavy halberd which is another colossal weapon that can utilize lion's claw the only difference is because it's a halberd it obviously has a much longer range so if you wanted to sacrifice aesthetics for practicality the golem's heavy halberd is what i would go with instead of the giant crusher hammer next one of my favorite weapons and for so many reasons is the knight rider's glaive halberd not only does it have amazing range but the two ash of wars that i use with it pair perfectly with that range so first of all you have the phantom slash this feels slightly op on this weapon because you're attaching a skill that can shoot out a phantom from range with a halberd that already has great range doing a double slice with a fairly low recovery time allowing you to disengage and then play a hit and run playstyle which combined with freezing grease lets you cheese the hell out of something like melania you know she's getting staggered is already weak to frostbite and you're generally playing it safe due to the distance you're able to keep it's super super strong and then we have the second ash of war which works great with this weapon which is the double slash now this isn't going to do tons of stance break damage or anything like that but from a pure dps perspective this skill is letting you slice enemies up in a combo that pairs fantastic with the range of the halberd and again if combined with grease is going to allow you to stack status pretty quickly due to the nature of the fast multi hits it's a lot of damage and feels super satisfying especially when you've got really high poise and you get locked into a quite a lengthy animation such as the double slash i was using this ash of war on a claymore previously as i do like the claymore but after putting on the knight rider's glaive the claymore just got dropped out of my rotation completely and i think i'd only ever use the claymore again in pvp scenarios but yeah both this weapon and those two ashes of war are s tier in my opinion so now we have the great stars hammer I love this weapon but particularly when dual wielding it which can be done by getting someone to trade it to you or duping it which is essentially the same thing. This absolutely fits the barbarian power fantasy. Two massive spiked clubs that have native bleed and I also like to pair these with lion's claw but not for the same play style as the colossal hammer. What I like to do with this is set up L1 spam where you're swinging both clubs as much as you can until I either get low on stamina or I see an attack incoming at which point then I'll hit lion's claw and poise right through it. Super fun, super strong, highly recommended and finally we have the Zweihander now in pvp this would be comparable to the guts greatsword or the claymore similar move sets to both except it's kind of the compromise in between the two in terms of its weight and its power but from a pve perspective what i like to do is use the chilling mist ash of war this setup is what i'll likely run around with in the world when i'm exploring or doing dungeon runs basically anything outside of major boss fights this combination is really strong it has great aoe cleave instant frostbite application if you open with the chilling mist super long range and it also passes the melania cheese test where if you want to go no skill scrub mode and pair this with the mimic you'll absolutely bully her with this setup i would like to say though if you're leveling a strength build and you don't have a lot of stamina investment this weapon would also be the recommended weapon until you're capable of building a much heavier colossal weapon just because it's the lightest of the colossals so finally we have our utility equipment that we carry around for self buffs it's very simple as i mentioned earlier there's no incantations or crazy multiple buff stacking we carry around a commander standard that's it that's the main buff if we really want to be super extra we'll take a weapon that has seppuku throw on the lords of blood exaltation talisman apply bleed to ourselves get the double buff switch our talisman back and yeah that's quite extra i don't actually bother with that i just use the commander standard but you have that option because this is a strength build you could also carry a great shield and play turtle i don't like to do that but there's lots of ways this build can be adapted mostly because it's more of a template than a build so feel free to adjust it how you like if we take a look at the stats i started as a samurai class for perspective at 150 50 vigor is more than enough i've completed all of new game plus with 50 vigor with multiple builds and had zero problems for pvp however i would recommend 60 vigor because that's what everybody else is going to be running 20 mind is enough for me to spam the weapon skills comfortably before needing a drink endurance is going to be as high as you can take it but after setting your other priority stats so we'll come back to this strength we want to go all the way up to our major soft cap of 80 dexterity is only going to be as high as it needs to be to reach the minimum requirement for the weapons we want to wield and at this point we go back to stamina and dump every point we have left assuming you're level capping at 150 like me you'll be around 39 stamina also depending on your starting class now if you're a low level it's going to be a balancing act between vigor to survive and then your strength for power and then the stamina to be able to wield the weapons and armor so just keep in mind that you can mix and match talismans to compensate for any lacking stats at certain points in the game for the early part of the game you just might find yourself wanting to wear slightly lighter armor and using lighter weapons until you've got enough points and stamina but what i would recommend doing is getting your great arsenal jar talisman as early as possible you could even get an Erdtree's favor plus two talisman which is an end game talisman through trading 
Getting any of these talismans early will give you a massive advantage if you don't mind taking shortcuts, but they won't make you so strong that you'll be OP or trivialize the game because I wouldn't be advocating for that if it did. So with that said, if you don't have any of these items, you're welcome to join our Discord server where we have a trading channel. I myself might even be able to drop these items for you if I have the time for those that are on PlayStation. The link to our Discord will be provided in the description and pinned comment. And that's pretty much the build guys. If you like this video, hit the thumbs up as that really helps me out. And if you're not already subscribed, consider doing so for more Elden Ring content coming soon. Okay guys, until next time, take care.